This is a video for Chem 1211 at Augusta University on how to de determine significant figures in measurements. So to determine significant figures from a measurement that you are making, one of the most important things is what is the device that you're using? Looking at the device that you're using, what kind of device is it? The devices we're going to look at are called graduated cylinders, at least initially. And you need to look at how these instruments are marked. So when we look at the graduated cylinder here, we see that it has markings for the ones place. That's the one, two, three, four, five. But that the smallest place it's marked to is actually the tenths place because there are markings in between the one, the two, the three, the four, and the five that correspond to the tenths. So we would actually say that this is marked to the tenths place or the 0 0.1 place and that because it's marked to the tenths if the liquid was in between two of the markings we would actually be able to estimate to the hundredths place or 0 0.01 and so we would say that this instrument is actually precise to whichever place we can estimate to we're certain about the ones and the tenths places for any measurement we make, but we're a little uncertain about the hundredths. When we look at the volume level in this graduated cylinder, notice as well that the markings are increasing as they go up the device. So we have more than four milliliters of liquid in this graduated cylinder. We also definitely have more than 4.4 milliliters of liquid in this graduated cylinder, but do we have more than 4.5 milliliters of liquid in this graduated cylinder? This is where the certainty and the uncertainty come in in our measurements. We're certain that we have at least 4.4 milliliter, milliliters of liquid, but it's possible that there's 4.49 in here. If you think it's exactly on that half marking between the 4 and the 5, then you would say 4.50. Someone else might read it and say that there are 4.51 milliliters of liquid in this graduated cylinder. The point is that if you round any of these measurements to the tenths place, the place the device is actually marked to, all of these become 4.5. So that's really the place we're certain about and the place we estimated is the place that we are uncertain about. So we're going to say that that's where we're precise to in these measurements. We are precise to the hundredths place for this graduated cylinder. So what about some other graduated cylinders? Looking at each, each of these graduated cylinders, we see that they're marked in slightly different ways. Looking at the one on the left, we see the nice big markings for tens of milliliters, the 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. We see markings in between the 10 and the 20, which are marked to the ones. So we should be able to estimate one more place. So we should be precise to the tenths with this graduated cylinder on the left. And so we should record 12.0 milliliters. Remember that whenever you make a measurement, especially for something that is a physical substance, if you don't include your units on that measurement, then that number is really pretty meaningless. So again, we're precise to the tenths with this measurement. What about the graduated cylinder on the right? Looking at the graduated cylinder on the right, we see markings for 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. So I would really say that that's marked every 10 places. But then we see markings in between those, which happen to go by every two. Now two is small enough that we could also effectively say that this is marked to the ones. So this is marked to the ones place. 
which means we are precise to the tenths place. Just like the graduated cylinder on the left, even though the markings are different, the markings are still on approximately the same scale, so we can still estimate to the tenths place. Probably with a little bit more uncertainty overall, but in terms of recording our volume here, we would still say 82, and if you think it's dead on that line, then you would say 82.0 for the volume, 82.0 milliliters. And again, precise to the tenths place. Let's go ahead and take a look at these devices with liquids in them. Go ahead and pause this video as you look at each of these and as you determine what the volume reading would be on each of these devices. Again, one more chance to pause the video. So the graduated cylinder on the left, you see nice big markings for 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and markings that are smaller than that every one milliliter. So it's marked to the ones, which means we can estimate to the tenths. And so we should be saying 11.0 milliliters for the volume, and again, precise to the tenths. With the second graduated cylinder, we should be saying 3.50 milliliters. With the third graduated cylinder, we should be saying 40 3.0 milliliters. The fourth graduated cylinder is a little tricky because it's marked to the fives. The fives are large enough, much larger than the ones by enough that we can't really say it's precise to the ones place or marked to the ones place. Really this is more like it's marked to the tens and it has guidelines at the halfway points to help you see what's halfway between the tens. So this is really marked to the tens and we should be able to estimate to the ones place with this device. So I would say that there are 110 milliliters, but we're actually precise to the ones place where the zero is. Now the last two images here are for burettes, which are a different type of glassware that are going to read the volume in different ways. It should be pretty clear from the image that the volume here starts at 40 and the volume measurements are actually increasing as you go down the burette to that 41. Likewise, in the second picture, there's a zero and you can see one and two. So these volumes are increasing as you go down the burette. The trick with these is to identify what the volume is. You can see the 40 and the 41 you can see markings between the 40 and the 41. You can see markings between the 0 and the 1 and the 1 and the 2. And the markings that are there mean that these are both actually marked to the tenths of a milliliter. Which means you should actually be able to estimate to the hundredths of a milliliter. So for the burette on the top, The volume is actually just below the 40 line. That doesn't mean that there are less than 40 milliliters because the markings are increasing. It actually means that there are more than 40 milliliters. It's also important to remember that each of the markings below the 40 are to the tenths place. So it doesn't look like the liquid is actually past the first marking. So we have more than 40 milliliters but less than 40.1 milliliters. So 40.02 milliliters would be a good reading for that volume. Maybe you might say 40.03. The point is that you should be estimating to the hundredths place. With the second graduated cylinder, you can see that the volume is very close to the zero. It's just below the zero based on where the meniscus is. If you think the volume is dead on that line for the first marking, then you should be recording that as 0.10 milliliters. If you think it's not quite there, 
then you might say 0 0.09 or 0 0.08 milliliters. So this is how you determine the precision of measured values. And both of these, again, with the burette are precise to the hundredths place. But with measurements, it's not only important to know where you're precise to, it's also important, important to know how many significant figures are in the measurement. Now, whenever there's a decimal, it's really nice because you can start on the left and you can move to the right to count your significant figures. You're going to start at counting at the first non-zero digit and you count every digit after that until you get to the place you're precise to, which should be the last place in the measurement anyway. So the 4.49, the 4.50, the 4.51, all of these measurements have three significant figures. The 12.0 milliliters, there's a decimal, so you would move to the right through that value. You would start counting at the 1. You count the 2 and the 0. So there are three significant figures. In the 82.0, again, there's a decimal, so you go to the right. You count starting at the 8, and you count everything that comes after that. So again, there are three significant figures. Go ahead and take a look at all of these measurements that we have here so far for the four graduated cylinders and the two burettes. And go ahead and determine how many significant figures are in each of these measurements. This is your last chance to pause. So all of the graduated cylinders actually have three significant figures for their measured volumes. The fourth graduated cylinder is the one that's a little tricky. It does not have a decimal there. So you would actually want to move to the left through the number as you count significant figures. But you would start counting at the place that you're precise to, which a lot of times might be a non-zero digit. But in this case, we know we're precise to where that zero is. We were precise to the ones place with that burette. And so we would count the zero and both ones there. With the burettes, the 40.02 again has a decimal, so there's four significant figures there. You should notice that based on where you think that volume is in the second burette, there is a possibility that your measured value there might have two or one significant figures. And that depending on how much volume you have there, that could limit your number of significant figures in a measurement. So what about values that are measurements, perhaps? Let's say that all of these are milliliters. But we don't know anything about the device that was used to measure these. When you don't know anything about the device that was used to measure these, you can still use the dot right, not left method of counting the significant figures. So as you understand it, go ahead and count the significant figures in these four measurements. Go ahead and pause the video. This is your last chance to pause the video. So with each of these measurements, the ones with no decimal, you want to move to the left as you count the significant figures. Because you don't know anything about the measurement, you're not actually going to count placeholder zeros as being significant. So you're not going to start counting significant figures until you get to the first non-zero digit, which is the one in this case. And so you're only going to count one, two, three significant figures. With 10,001, again, you would start at the right set end of the number and you would move to the left because there is no decimal. But the first number you see there is a 1, so you do count that, and you count everything that comes after it to get five significant figures. The 10.001 has a decimal, so you would go to the right through the number. You start counting there with the 1 in the tens place, and you count everything that comes after it. 
The fourth number again has a decimal, but it starts with a zero because the number is less than one. It's very important to record numbers that are less than one with a leading zero. So we have a bunch of zeros there that are all placeholders, and then we get to a one, and we count everything that comes after that, even though those are zeros, to get three significant figures. Now where are these values going to be precise to? Well, if there is no decimal, then they're precise to the place that was the first place you counted, which is the 100s place here, or the 1s place here. If there is a decimal in the number, then the value is precise to the last place that you counted for significant figures, or the last digit that's shown in the value.